Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, salvation. I know all of us uh, know about uh, salvation, right? Uh, because if you if if we don't know salvation, we are not we are not here. The 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 fact that we are here, we know what it means by salvation. But uh, today I'm going to explain more, so that we'll be able to understand more, and we'll be able to share also to others. And uh, the title of our message for today is. The assurance and the evidence of salvation. There's uh, assurance and evidence of our salvation. Our text for today is in 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 to 13. I'm reading from the New King James uh, Version Bible. Okay, it says there, And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is is in his son meaning our lord jesus he who has the son has life he who does not have the son does not have life talking about eternal life these things i have written to you who believe in the name of the son of god that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the son of god hallelujah let's pray Father, we thank you, God. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for reminding us, O oh God, of uh, your promises, O oh God. Most especially, O oh God, the gift of eternal life that you are giving to each one, O oh God, to all those who, who uh, would like to receive, O oh God, this gift of eternal life and those who have uh, received this eternal life, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us, O oh God, that's only through our Lord Jesus Christ that we will have this eternal life, O oh God. Uh, it's only through uh, our faith in the Lord Jesus. And uh, today, O oh God, as we study your word, we pray, O oh God, for your fresh anointing and fresh revelations, Lord, be upon each one of us. And most especially to me, O oh God, as I preach your word, O oh God. Father, we thank you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, there is assurance of salvation. Amen? The Lord promised it. God promised it. When God promises, it is true. And He will fulfill it. Amen? Hallelujah. So, when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have the assurance of salvation. When we die, or when the rapture comes, we will enter heaven. That's the assurance of salvation. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, if there's assurance of salvation, there's also evidence of salvation. There's evidence or proof that truly we are in Christ Jesus. That truly we have been born again. Not in the flesh, but in the spirit. That truly uh, Christ is in our, in our lives. Christ is the Lord of our lives. Amen? So we'll, we'll, we'll uh, study about the assurance of salvation and we'll also study about the evidences, the proof of uh, salvation, being in Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. So the evidence of salvation, the evidence of our salvation will, will manifest in our lives. God knows and also other people will be able to observe uh, the manifestation of you know what 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 uh, it means to be in Christ or what it means to be uh, saved or what it means to have received Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior there will be uh, evidences that other people could uh, could see and these evidences are you know could be in our actions through our actions through our through our words uh, people could see it could observe uh, our actions, our words, our attitude, what else? Uh, our, our set of uh, priorities in life, <clears throat> right? Our, our priorities in life will, will, will change, right? So the assurance of salvation. And Apostle, uh, Apostle John had written this epistle or uh, letter to give assurance to those who have received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior that they have eternal life. That we have eternal life because we have received 
the Lord Jesus, the Son of God, into our lives as our personal Lord and Savior. So, Apostle John here, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 11, uh, it says there, And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. Now, you know, Apostle John was not just talking about life. He was talking about eternal life. Life in, in the kingdom of God here on earth and in the life to come in heaven. Eternal life. Our eternal life uh, started when we received Jesus Christ as our Lord and, and Savior. So it starts here on earth. Amen. And when we depart from this world, it will continue for eternity. That's why it's called eternal. Eternity. No end. Forever. And this is a gift of God. So Apostle John was talking about eternal life. Not just life, but eternal life. And this uh, eternal life is a gift of God. The gift of God. The gift of eternal life. Is a gift of God. And we, co we could see that also in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the second part. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So, you, you might uh, ask uh, those who are uh, watching us online or who have joined us online, you might ask, how can I have eternal life? Or what, what shall I do to, to have eternal life? Well, it's very simple. Just receive Jesus Christ into your life, into your heart as your personal Lord and Savior. And you will have that gift of eternal life that God has had promised to, to all people. To those who would like to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. This gift of eternal life is available to all people. No matter what, uh, what uh, religion you have. No matter how old you are, how young you are, it's available to all people. Amen. Uh, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. We're talking about all people all over the world. God loves all people. And God wants, if uh, possible, that all people all over the world will, will enter heaven. Amen. And of course, once again, this gift of eternal life can only be obtained through faith in the Lord Jesus, the Son of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And uh, also, Apostle John had mentioned that those who do not uh, truly receive Christ as their Lord and Savior, they have no eternal life. What does that mean? In, in uh, verse 12, 1 John chapter 5, verse 12, uh, this is what he said. He who has the Son has life. Those who have received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, they have life or eternal life. He was talking about eternal life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. Uh, you know, we are not talking about uh, life and death in here. We are talking about eternal life. So those who have received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, they have eternal life. And he said, those who did not receive or who do not want to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they, they don't have eternal life. They will not, they will not uh, uh, enjoy eternal life in the kingdom of God. Because, you know, because uh, if, uh, if uh, you know, a person did not receive Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior or her Lord and Savior and he passes away, without receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that person, uh, you know, when, when, uh, when he faces God, of course, uh, the, the, the criteria of God for us to enter heaven is through our faith in the Lord Jesus by receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And of course, you know, we, we don't have the, the right to judge, but, you know, uh, based on the, the Word of God, you know, based on what we have read, those who do not have the Son of God does not have life. They don't have eternal life because they did not receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So once again, eternal life, our eternal life, that gi this gift of eternal life can only be obtained through faith in the Lord Jesus by receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. 
Amen. And this is what all this is uh, what uh, the Lord Jesus also said in John chapter 3 verse uh, 18 in IV. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. Okay, it's very clear. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. And who is God's one and only Son? Jesus Christ. Amen. Those who have believed in Him, is talking about faith in Him, who have received Him, who have uh, put their trust and their faith in Him, they have eternal life. He said, they are not condemned. But those who did not, who do not believe or do not have faith in the Lord Jesus, don't receive Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, uh, the Lord Jesus said they are already condemned because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. It's not just believing; it's trusting and putting our faith in the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So once again, there's assurance of salvation to those who have truly received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Did you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Amen. That means you have this assurance of salvation. When, when, uh, when the Lord comes, uh, when the rapture comes, we'll be caught up in the air to be with the Lord forever. That's, called, that's what we call the rapture. Now, that's the assurance of salvation. What about the evidence of salvation? We'll talk also about the evidence of our salvation. The proofs uh, or the evidences that we have truly received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Okay, number one proof here is Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life. Amen. Do you want Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life? Now, what does it mean by the Lord Jesus as the Lord of our life, right? In uh, verse 12, 1 John chapter 5, verse 12, it says there, He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life, okay? So, you know, when we talk about <clears throat> Christianity, it's all about Christ. It's all about the Lord Jesus. It's all about Jesus Christ. This is not about religion. This is about Jesus Christ. Okay? This is about our Lord. And, uh, you know, talking about the Lordship of the Lord Jesus, we may have, you know, a person may be religious. He goes to church uh, every Sunday, but he does not have a personal relationship of the Lord, with the Lord Jesus. That means that the Lord Jesus is not the Lord of his life. <clears throat> to be able to make the Lord Jesus as the Lord of our lives, we must receive him into our lives. As we do not do it over and over again. Right? And when we sin, uh, not, not intentionally, when we commit sin, we are quick to repent and ask God for his so, the, you know, that's, that's one of the evidences that we have been truly been born again. We have truly received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That's one proof and evidence or evidence of our salvation. Okay? We do not commit sin intentionally. And it says in uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 18, New Living Translation Bible, we know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning. For God's Son holds them securely, and the evil one cannot touch them. So it says there, we know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning. Meaning, children of God do not have that lifestyle of sinning. Right? And who are the children of God? We are the children of God. Everyone who receives Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior is a child of God. Amen. Amen. In John chapter 1, verse uh, 12 to uh, 13, it says there, 
Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. To those who receive Jesus Christ, and those who have put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, they are children of God. So not every person is a child of God. Only those who receive Jesus Christ into their lives as their Lord and Savior, they are the children of God. Amen? We are children of God because we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And as children of God, we do not uh, commit sin intentionally. Right? And the evil one has no hold against us or cannot touch us. Touch the, ch the children of God, meaning we are untouchable by by the devil, cannot be harmed by the devil, because Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. We are God's children, and it says they are children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. We, when we receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We, are, we become children of God we, because we are born into the family of God. Amen. Are you happy to be a part of God's family? Amen. To be a child of God? Yeah, I'm happy. Hallelujah. Praise God. And uh, the third one is you love other born again Christians. There's another, there's, here's, this is another uh, proof or evidence of your salvation that you are a child of God that you have been truly been born again that you have truly received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior you love other born again Christians okay in uh, first John chapter 5 verse 1 to 2 New Living Translation Bible everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God has become a child of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his children also. Amen. Amen. We love God. We love God the Father. <coughs> and we love the children of God also. We love each other. Amen. Amen. We know we love God's children if we love God and obey his commandments. So he's talking about the more than just loving one another, uh, he's talking also about loving God and obeying His commandments. Amen. So once again, if you love God, you should love God's children also. We are we have family, right? We we, are, we belong to a family, and uh, have you seen a family where the the children are? Fighting against each other. That's not, that's not good, right? Hallelujah. The same thing with us. We belong to the family of God. So we love God and we love the children of God. We love each other. Amen. And so if we if we are not comfortable uh, you know dealing or fellowshipping with other uh, fellow believers there's something wrong if, if we if we have uh, if we are not comfortable loving God's children there's something wrong with us Amen. <coughs> and uh, the fourth one you obey God's command so there this is another uh, evidence or proof of our salvation Another proof or evidence that we have truly received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We obey God's command. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, New Living Translation Bible, it says there, Loving God means keeping His commandments. Okay? And His commandments are not burdensome. Okay? Is obeying God uh, too burdensome? Nope. Too difficult? No, right? So we should love God and uh, to show our love for God, 
we do obey his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. Hallelujah. Well, <coughs> it doesn't mean that uh, all genuine born again Christians are sinless or they are really perfect. No. It means that as born again Christians, as genuine born again Christians, as a sign, as a proof or evidence that we have truly received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We, we, we are not uh, sinless, but we sin less and less and less and less or lesser, yeah. right? Mm. And uh, become more and more and more godly, God-fearing, more obedient, more obedient unto the Lord. To his word, to his commands, and more loving uh, unto the Lord. So, once again, if we love God truly, uh, we should also be joyfully obeying his commands. And his commands, once again, are not burdensome. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. <coughs> So this is the standard of the Lord Jesus for loving him. If we love him, we should keep his commands. That's what uh, he's saying. Now the question is, do you obey the Lord's commands? And you might ask, what commands? Okay, I'll give you some of uh, the Lord's commands. In Luke chapter 20, verse 25, New King James uh, Version Bible, this is what the, the scripture says. Uh, Will then, he said, oh, this is the response of the Lord Jesus, I should say, to those who were asking him, if it is if, if it's right to pay taxes. So this is the response of the Lord Jesus in Luke chapter 20, verse 25. He said, Will then, he said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and give to God what belongs to God. We're paying our taxes, right? Mm -hmm. That belongs to Caesar. That belongs to Uncle Sam. That belongs to IRS. And then God said, what belongs to Caesar, give unto Caesar. What belongs to God, gives unto God. What belongs to God? Our tithes, including our offering, right? And then, <clears throat> Also in uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse uh, 19 to 20, the Lord Jesus said, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So this is another command of the Lord Jesus, to make disciples, discipleship, right? But before we can disciple others, we must be disciples of the Lord Jesus first. We must go through discipleship first before we can disciple others, right? Discipleship is a very long process. It is not a one-time teaching. Discipleship it involves everything, uh, and that, that includes uh, you know, our life, because we we are we are we are trying to help. We are we are trying to help a new believer to become, uh, you know, to change uh, his life, to become more godly, to to become closer unto the Lord, to become a disciple of. And then in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, New Living Translation Bible, is what the Lord Jesus also said, Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. So these are just <coughs> examples of the Lord's uh, commands that we should obey, right? We obey God's commands. And God's commands are not burdens. So these are just some of the commands of the Lord that we need to obey, right? Are you happy? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. And 
the fifth, fifth one is number five. What matters to God matters to you. That's another sign, another evidence of our salvation. Another proof or evidence that we have truly and genuinely received Jesus Christ into our lives as our Lord and Savior. What matters to God also matters to me. Amen. What do you think matters to God? Souls. Souls. Perfect answer. Souls. One soul matters to God. Amen. Do, you, do, you, do you still remember the story of the 100 sheep? One got lost. And then the Lord had to, you know, in that story, uh, the owner, the, the shepherd had to leave the 99 uh, to you know, save the, the, that one sheep. Because one soul matters to God. Right? Every soul matters to God. He wants to save all people. He doesn't want people to go to hell. Because by default, people are going to hell. Once again, through the scriptures that we have read, without Jesus Christ in the life of a person, when he dies, that person, by default, will go to hell. Basing on the scriptures that we have read, because those who don't have the Son of God do not have eternal life. Right? And in Second uh, Peter chapter three verse nine, New King James Version Bible, uh, this is what Apostle uh, Peter said: "The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness, but is." long suffering toward us not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance because a lot of people are asking when is when is uh, the lord coming back when is the end of time right well, why don't there why doesn't the rapture you know happen now <clears throat> well it can happen anytime but what what will happen to those uh, people, to our relatives, our loved ones, our friends, who have not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior yet? Right? We go to hell because we don't have Christ. <coughs> but uh, in in uh, Second Peter chapter three verse nine, it says there that you know God is patient. He's patient. He's patiently waiting that more and more people will come to Christ. And God wants us, the Lord wants us, the Lord wants to use us to reach out to these people so that they will be able to hear the good news. That's why we have our great commission. Go and preach the good news to everyone, to every creature, to every person. <clears throat> so that more people would come to Christ and more people will be able to enter heaven. Right? Do you want do you want your loved ones to enter heaven? <coughs> Amen. Then share the good news to each one of them. <coughs> Praise God for uh, those who have uh, virtual or online uh, Bible study. I have uh, online Bible study once a week, uh, sharing the good news to my loved ones over there in the Philippines, Pastor Anining has one uh, online Bible study group as well. <coughs> and there was uh, one time, I think last week, <coughs> before, uh, before Lisa got uh, cold with COVID, they have they had their uh, group's anniversary uh, celebration virtual, and uh, they wanted me to be their guest uh, speaker, so I was there, and they wanted to know how to share the good news and how to how to handle people you know, that are difficult people. So I was their guest speaker. 
And praise God because uh, it was it was a group of uh, their class, her classmates, all over the world. We, we have some in Canada, some here in the U.S., some in the Philippines. I don't know the others where they are. <coughs> but uh, that's a good, uh, you know, that's a good uh, desire. You know, they have that desire to to share the good news more effectively. So I was telling them what we are doing here. We do prayer of three. We don't just uh, share the good news. We pray for people. We make friends with people for 30 days. And then we share the good news to them. And then we take good care of them through discipleship. So that, that's what uh, I was sharing today. So share the good news to your loved ones, to your relatives, and to your friends. Use, uh, use uh, Facebook Messenger, use uh, Zoom. <coughs> We have uh, we have our Zoom uh, meeting. Uh, app. You can use it. We we can we can you know we can use it every day, every night, and it's not being used every day, every night. But you know if uh, it's only a group of uh, less than ten people, you can use uh, Facebook Messenger. If more than ten people, then use uh, Zoom. And uh, I think we have unlimited. <coughs> So what matters to God matters to, to you. Amen. And every soul matters to God, so every soul matters to you as well. Every soul matters to us as well. Our neighbor, our, our you know, classmate, those who are studying, your work, your workmates. You know, every soul matters to God. Another one that matters to God is your spiritual growth matters to God. The Lord wants us, wants every one of us to grow and mature spiritually so that he can use us for his purpose and for his glory. Okay? <clears throat> so your spiritual growth matters to God. So if we are truly in Christ, there must be you know, a sign that we are growing more like Christ. We are growing into Christ likeness. Not stagnant, but every day should be an opportunity for us to grow spiritually, to mature spiritually. Amen. So that uh, as we mature, we'll bear more fruit, much fruit, fruit that will last. That's what uh, the Lord Jesus said. Hallelujah. Another another one that matters to the Lord is discipleship matters to to the Lord. Hallelujah. And if you are truly in Christ, if you have truly received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you should desire or you would desire to be a disciple of the Lord. Who wants to be a disciple of the Lord? Amen. We should all be disciples of the Lord. We should not be afraid of being a disciple of the Lord. Because that will, uh, you know, that will uh, give the distinction that we are truly uh, genuinely born again Christians. Being a disciple of the Lord. Not just a believer, but a disciple of the Lord Jesus. That's why the Lord Jesus commanded his disciples and he's commanding us to go and make disciples of all nations. Amen. But discipleship is a process, it's a long it's a long term process. Right? And it you know it involves commitment. I cannot disciple anyone who is running away from me. Uh, praise God that brother all uh, is willing to become a disciple of the Lord. So I am spending time with uh, Brother Raul on uh, Thursday nights. And, uh, you know, you could, you could see.
see at the back some of our lessons uh, that we are taking up. So discipleship is a process. Discipleship matters to the Lord. And lastly, <coughs> as evidence and proof of our salvation, as evidence and proof that we have truly and genuinely received Jesus Christ, not only as our Savior, but as our Lord, the Lord of our lives. The, the last one, number six, is the fruit of the Holy Spirit becomes more and more visible into your, in your life. Right? You know the fruit of the Holy Spirit? That's in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. It says there, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, against such things there is no law. Okay. This, uh, this uh, attribute should be uh, visible in our life. We, 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 we were uh, loving before, now we should be more loving, right? That we can love our enemies, that we can love the un unlovable people. Because the Lord Jesus said, love those you know, who persecute you. Love your enemies. How about uh, joy? Even, even in the midst of the storm, we still have joy. We still have also peace. You have patience. Uh, you have uh, kindness. You, 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 know, you, you are so kind uh, to others. And then goodness. Faithfulness. Faithfulness especially to, to God. Faithfulness unto the Lord. And uh, gentleness. Self-control. You know, these are visible evidences or proof that we are truly uh, have been genuinely born again, that we have truly received Jesus Christ as the Lord of our life. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So once again, <clears throat> the evidences or the proof that we have truly received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior will manifest from, from us. It will manifest from you. It will manifest from me through our actions, through our words, through our attitudes, through the way we think, our mindset, right? And also through our priorities in life. It will manifest. This is what the Lord Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 20 in IV. Thus, by their fruits, you will recognize kikita sa akin yung bunga na ito. How fruit. By their fruit, you will know them. By their fruit, you will recognize them. In the New Living Translation Bible, uh, it says there, yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. Right? We identify uh, trees, we identify plants, through their fruit, right? Oh, this is a tomato because of the fruit. It's tomato, right? Uh, have you seen a, a fruit, a tomato fruit, uh, as, a, as a big tree, as a mango tree? No, right? <coughs> so, this, you know, uh, the Lord Jesus is uh, clear and simple in this. That <coughs> You will know them by their fruit. We will be known by, their, by our fruit, through our actions, through our words, through the way we think, our mindset, right? our attitude, our behavior, also our priorities in life. If, uh, if you see me, that my priority in life is money and more money and more money, you, you could you could uh, say that God is not my first priority because if there's an opportunity for overtime instead of going to the Bible study I'll go to the overtime to my overtime because that's my, that's where money is right <clears throat> so the evidence of our uh, salvation the evidence the proof and evidence that 
we belong to Christ, that we have received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So once again, there is assurance of salvation to those who have truly received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. There's assurance of salvation. Amen. So we should be happy that the Lord has promised it and He keeps His promises. Amen. And also, when there is assurance of <coughs> salvation, there is also evidence of salvation. We have studied the evidences of uh, salvation. Amen. And also, uh, you know, as, uh, as evidence of our salvation, that we belong to Christ, that we have truly received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior once again people could see through our actions and through, through our words. So make all this what we have learned as a proof and evidence to be, be very visible in, in our lives. Make, make all of this, uh, I'll, I'll uh, uh, summarize, make all of this as proof and evidences I, I, you know, of your of your salvation. Make them very visible in your life. Number one is Jesus Christ is, the, is truly the Lord of your life. Okay. Number two, you do not commit sins intentionally. Number three, you love other born again Christians. That means you love uh, full children of God. Number four, you obey God's command. Number five, what matters to God also matters to you. And lastly, the fruit of the Holy Spirit becomes more visible in your life. Amen. Did we, did we learn something today? Amen. Amen. Once again, there's assurance of our salvation, so we should rejoice. The Lord promises, and He, will, he keeps His promises. But there's also proof and evidence to show that we are truly saved, that we are truly uh, genuinely born again Christians, that we have truly received Jesus Christ into our lives, not only as our Savior, but as the Lord of our lives. Meaning, He is in control of our lives. He is the one sitting at the throne of our lives. He is the Lord, He is the King of our lives. Amen? And we are Surrendered, totally surrendered, submitted, uh, committed, dedicated, devoted unto the Lord Jesus. Because He is our Lord. Amen? Amen. Are, we, are you all willing? If you are willing, so we stand up. Amen. <coughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, oh God, uh, thank you, Lord, for your promise, oh God. Hallelujah. For your word, oh God, that truly we have the assurance of our salvation, oh God. And, uh, Lord Jesus, thank you very much, oh God, that you have made this, uh, this uh, salvation available, oh God, by going to that cross, oh God, by, by shedding your blood at that cross in Calvary, oh God. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving us unconditionally. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, oh God. Uh, yes, Lord. Uh, we pray, oh God, that you just continue, Lord, to help each one of us, oh God, to seek you with all our heart, oh God, to, 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 to love you with all our heart, oh God, and to obey and follow your word, oh God, your commands, oh God, with all our heart, joyfully, oh God, and lovingly, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And also, Lord God, uh, thank you very much, oh God that uh, there are proof and evidences, oh God, or evidences, oh God, of our salvation, uh, proof that we are truly, oh God, uh, in, in you, oh God, in you, Lord Jesus. Uh, proof and evidences, oh God, that uh, we have truly accepted the Lord Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Help us, oh God, that each and every area, oh God, should uh, be developed in our lives, oh God. Hallelujah. And uh, yes, oh God, uh, help each one of us, oh God, and uh, use us, oh God, for your glory and for your purpose, oh God. And uh, also, Lord God, I pray, oh God, for your blessings upon my brothers and my sisters. 
I pray, O oh God, for your protection upon us, O oh God. Protect us, O oh God, from any work of the evil one, even from any virus, O oh God. And I apply the precious blood of my Lord Jesus Christ upon each one of us and upon every member of our families in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.